All right, so what we're going to do is, at this point, we've gotten our uh, pictures already drawn, or most of us have already drawn them. So we started off with this little tiny uh, comic book panel that we had, and then we went and we enlarged it greatly using this grid method, right? So we went through, we did, you know, like a fourth of an inch grid, and then we expanded to a two inch grid, or some of you took it all the way to like a, uh, maybe you started with a half inch grid and you took it to a three inch grid. You, you guys all have already comprehended this process. So I've got my big panel right here ready to go. Now, my instinct tells me I desperately want to go through and take some black ink to this, some black paint, and really bring it to life, right? And really make it rich and cool looking. But the fact of the matter is, if I start doing that, then painting over top of that is just going to cause this really messy looking effect. It's not going to be good. Now, you guys remember we talked about the printing process and how there are two different types of printing process, right? There's RGB and CMYK, right? So RGB is red, green, blue. That's how our eyeballs work. That's how a lot of basic printing works. And then there's CMYK, which stands for what? Do you guys remember? Cyan? Cyan? Magenta. Magenta? Yellow. Yellow, yeah. And then what's the K? T is black. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we're going to be working for this project with the CMYK style, which in turn looks a lot like the primary colors, right? So we've got yellow. I've got some blue here, which is representing our cyan. I've got straight just red, which is going to represent our magenta. Uh, a little bit of water here just to clean up my brush. And then I've also got a couple paint brushes and just some paper towels to dry my paint brushes. Um, so what's going to go through is basically this. What we want to do is turn this into a halftone style comic book page, right? So think back to like Roy Lichtenstein or any of the olden time comic book panels that you've ever seen with that kind of like weird dot pattern all over it. Now if you want to color something yellow, blue, or red, or CMYK, you are more than welcome to color it a solid color. So say for example, in this case, I wanted to make uh, the Silver Surfer here, if I wanted to paint him blue, I can just literally paint him blue, outline it and color it in and you know paint by numbers. I don't have to worry about the halftone dots at all. Okay? If you want a color that is not one of these three, that's where the halftone dots come in because I can't mix and match my colors. I'm not allowed in this project. So I cannot go through and like just take some red and take some blue and make purple for Galactus's gargantuan head here. Um, I have to find a way of mixing and matching. Okay? Now, what I'm going to say is this. I really would implore you guys to get a piece of you know scratch paper and kind of test it ahead of time because if I do red on blue versus blue on red, it's going to look a little bit different, right? So if you want a certain shade, for example, I really desperately want to make Galactus's head purple, but I want it to be kind of like a lighter purple, uh, maybe like your your shirt there. I don't want it to be like dark royal purple. I want it to be kind of light and bubbly looking purple, like a bubblegum kind of vibe. So I'm going to set this off on the side here real quick. I'm going to do a very quick test. So I'm going to start off with kind of a base of blue. This is all tempera paint, by the way. Um, we're using tempera for two reasons. One, actually three reasons, I guess. One, it does not stain your clothes. It's all water-based. So if you do get it on your clothes, this is an Art 1 class. So if you do get it on your clothes, um, it'll wash right out. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, notice that for this particular project, I'm going on pretty lightly. I'm kind of spreading it pretty thin. So it's kind of this nice light blue here. I'll zoom in real quick. Um, I want it to be kind of a nice lighter blue, okay? Then on the flip side here, we'll get some red. So this will be like a red base. And again, I can put it on thickly, you know, but I want to spread it out, make it thin. I'll explain why in a second. There is a reason. Um, another reason that we're using temper is because whenever you do spread it pretty thin, it gets kind of transparent. It's kind of watery in that. Um, the reason that we are using this paint particularly, is, again, we're going to be painting on top of our way cool drawing. So as I paint over top of this, I don't want to lose all my good detail that I spent so much freaking time putting in it. Um, so as I start to paint, if I spread it thin enough, it'll actually go on a little bit transparent, which will allow me to still see my drawing underneath. Then whenever I'm all done painting, I can go back and just blacken in all of my pencil lines. Um, and it'll be really pretty cool and crisp when we're done. So. Uh, something else that's great about temper, you can see I literally put this on a couple seconds ago and it is about halfway dry already. It dries crazy quick again because it's water based. Now the one thing you want to be extremely careful about whenever you're using tempera, this is the same kind of stuff you used when you were three in finger paint. It's, it's really, really good. It doesn't mess you up. I wouldn't suggest eating it, but let's be fair, you'll probably be okay. Um, it's really, really pretty simple stuff. The great downfall of tempera is the fact that, let's say, 
eight years from now, you have this picture hanging on your wall because, of course, you'll all go home and hang it on your wall. Um, and you're, you're just staring at it, and all of a sudden, you know, there's a horrible flood in your house because that happens occasionally. And the flood only attacks this one picture because floods are sentient and they hate comic books. Um, and it only attacks this one picture. The second water hits your picture, it will totally begin to re-salute and kind of get all liquidy and messy again. It's, it's dry to the touch, but I promise, the second I add a little bit of water to it, it starts to reactivate, which is kind of cool, but also can really destroy a cool picture very quickly. So my big suggestion is this. When we are done with this picture, or any picture that we use uh, tempera, because we'll be doing more painting in a second uh, for our, you know, a couple projects here. Um, any project that you use temper for, please keep it away from water when it's dry, because otherwise you're going to totally jack it up. Cool? Just throwing that out there. But again, like I said, what's good is if you get it on your clothes, it washes right out. So, this should be nearly dry. Let's take a peek here. Almost. Oh, a little bit more. Okay, we'll give it a couple more seconds here. And again, like I said, we are going to put it on very, very lightly, um, very thinly. It's better to do three or four coats than it is to do one super heavy coat. If you guys remember back with our graffiti project, it's the same thing. Whenever you're spray painting graffiti, instead of going on and hammering down with your graffiti can, it's much easier to do a couple light waves, and then it goes on much thinner, much lighter, much nicer. All right, so at this point, it is pretty dry. So again, you can see, even in the five minutes that it took for me to uh, ramble, it dries quickly, okay? Now, I will highly suggest that you do not do the halftone dots until it is dry, because otherwise what happens is it starts to mix, right? And again, we don't want it to mix. We want it to be two single colors with dots on top. I don't want the literal color purple to appear. I want to kind of simulate the color purple, okay? Which is a good movie with Oprah Winfrey. No, nobody? No, it's high school. No one knows what the color purple is. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take uh, some blue here, and I'm going to do blue dots on my red background. Notice as I'm going along now, we are freehanding these, so obviously it's going to be a little bit uh, not quite robotic, and that's okay. But I'm going to try and keep it as uniform as possible. If I was doing this uh, more professionally, I'd probably be using a silk screen or some printing technique that I could repeat this process very quickly and very easily. That's how they used to do it back with the uh, printing press. Nobody ever half-toned by hand. Um, we're doing this for two reasons. One, I don't have enough silk screeners for everyone. Um, and two, because at the same time, this is also teaching your hand to be a little bit more steady to get this kind of uniform effect. Now again, notice that these are just regular old blue dots on a red background. But what will happen is eventually, kind of squint and blur your eyes a little bit, I promise, it'll start to turn into a purple. It's pretty cool. So we'll do that. I'll switch my uh, paintbrushes here because I want them nice and clean. If you only have one paintbrush, make sure that you clean it out in between colors. Um, I can use, you know, blue all I want all over the place, but if you're going to switch colors, make sure you clean your brush, otherwise, what's the point? So now I'm going to do red on top of the blue. Because the blue is a little bit darker, I have to use a little bit more red paint. And again, you just kind of work on making these as uniform as you can. There's kind of a handmade quality to it, a little bit of a craft thing going on, and that's just fine. But you want them to be, we're still kind of simulating a robotic halftone process. Now, things to think about. You are welcome to offset your picture. So, for example, if I want to have my red dots kind of bleed off, you know, the page a little bit, so that they're purposefully offset, say, like an Andy Warhol style, where it's the ink and uh, the picture, the color doesn't quite line up, kind of like with our graffiti. If we didn't, if we wanted it to not quite line up on purpose, that's just fine with me. It's kind of what look you're going for. Notice that again, this is not a hard task, but. It's going to take a little bit of doing, a little bit of uh, time to get it how you want it to be. So again, up close, you can clearly see, right? Red background, blue dots, blue background, red dots. And we know if we mix red and blue, we get purple just fine. But I want to be able to kind of simulate these colors. So do I want it to be a dark er purple or a light er purple? So the more and more that I start to zoom out, and again, you're still going to see these dots, don't get me wrong. 
But what happens is eventually, um, if you kind of squint and blow your eyes a little bit, um, you'll start to see kind of a more purpley tone as opposed to, as opposed to a straight, just blue, or as a straight red, just to give you some comparison. You'll start to notice a little bit of color differentiation, bless you, um, going on. So now it's up to me. Do I want more of a blue-ish purple or more of a red-ish purple? Um, in my particular case, and again, vice versa, if I wanted it to be really light purple, I could do blue dots and red dots if I wanted to. So for example, for kind of secret option three, I could do a whole series of blue dots. And obviously I would let these dry. Set it like that. And then I could go through, pretend these are dry. Um, I could go through, maybe go in a different direction and do some red dots. So again, what ends up happening is because that background is in essence white, it's like I was blending my reds, my blues, and a little bit of white and it's gonna give me a much lighter purple. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. So these are kind of my three options for what I want to do. So again, more of a darker purple, a little bit more of a lighter purple, or a really light purple. Uh, for my particular case, I think I'm going to go for the, the blue here. I just kind of, I think that's what I'm gravitating towards the most. So I'm going to be using that for my uh, picture, okay? All right, so back to our good piece here. So again, as we've already discovered here on the, uh, the practice, I decided that I want to do blue with red dots on top, and I want to do it for Galactus's face. Now, I don't know a lot about Galactus, so I, maybe I want to do a little bit of research, pull up a picture of what he looks like on my phone. Now, maybe you've decided that you want to go exactly how he looks in the comics. So in the comics, Galactus has got this big old purple helmet, and right about here, this is all skin right here. This is like his mouth hole uh, for his cowl. So I wouldn't obviously want to paint that blue, it would mess it up. Vice versa, maybe you're thinking to yourself, screw the comics, I really like the big floating head and I think purple's a dumb color, I'd rather it be green, right? You could make these whatever color you want. Spider-Man does not have to wear red and blue, right? The Silver Surfer can be purple and lime green for all I care. Like, I don't care, I really don't. If you want to make it perfect, great, do a little bit of research, pull it up on your phone and make sure that it looks exact. If you don't, and you just want to color the living crap out of this thing, that's great too. I really don't care. It has to be colored well, good craftsmanship, but as far as keeping it true to the comic, you don't have to at all. Again, go back and look at any Andy Warhol stuff, right? He made a whole career out of mixing and matching colors so that uh, Marilyn Monroe's head wasn't skin tone. It was, you know, lime green and purples, you know? Have a little bit of fun with it if you want to, if you want to. For me, I'm more of a, uh, a purist, so I'm going to start getting a little bit of this this blue that I have in my cup here okay and again you shouldn't need to thin it out with water or any of that if you add water to temper it just starts breaking down now I know he's got these big like wingtip looking things over here his helmet kind of comes up and kind of fades off over in this direction he's got this big mask over top of his eyes his eyes are gonna be pure white in mine and I want to leave his head or excuse me his mouth area alone I'll do that with like a skin tone later on so here we go now the first time that you add paint, you're going to be a little bit nervous because, again, you spent a long time drawing this. You don't want to jack it up. But the one thing that I'll tell you, not that you want to hear this, but the one thing that I'll tell you that will absolutely put your mind at ease is this. You drew it once. You can draw it again. And you actually absolutely have that skill. Not that you want to do that, but I promise you that you can. So, again, here it goes. goes on pretty thick, right? And you're saying, oh, I'm losing it. Oh, no. But why? Remember that because I'm starting off with a blue base, I can just literally paint my color on but you'll see as I start to thin it down, slowly but surely, that pencil kind of comes through again. Now, if I'm using this solid blue here, I might lose some of my details. I might have to go back and redraw them a little bit later on, but I still have these guidelines to work with. You know what I mean? So again, if I did it once, I can do it again. So make sure not to lose that comic panel for reference. Take your time with it. Do some good details. Now, if you're really uber nervous, maybe there's some fine detail that you just don't want to be bothered with uh, painting over top, 
then instead, especially with blue, it goes on pretty dark. Um, instead, maybe I go through and I kind of do a little bit of outlining here. You know, maybe I want to leave this little weird coffee stained circle on his head. So I'll just kind of paint around it a little bit. The only thing I want to make you cautious of if you decide to start painting around things um, is the fact that you don't want to end up with that weird little halo where it kind of, you know, gives a fuzzy edge or something. Realize that whatever I leave, a little bit of crack of white space right there, whatever I end up leaving on there, um, I have to go through and make sure that my black uh, starts to paint through it and is able to cover it up. Otherwise, what's the point? So again, I'm just going to go through here. I'm going to start painting. And that's about it. Um, this, uh, what uh, other suggestions I can give you along the way. Suggestion one, I would really tell you to start with one color. So example, I, I'm going to do the blue. And I'm going to do blue that's anywhere in my picture. So if I want blue elsewhere, maybe I want the background of this to have like a cosmic lime green blast, right? And I want blue dots in there. Do them now. Do all of your blues first, then all of your reds, then all of your yellows, or do them in any order that you want to. But get them all done first, right? Because every time I do one, I'm going to have to sit here for five minutes while it dries. You know what I mean? So doing a little bit of blue, letting it dry, then coming back and having to do more blue on top of that is just a waste of time and space. You know what I mean? So take your time with it, and I promise, even if it goes on pretty thick, if you, if you blend it out and make it kind of uh, thinner than it normally would be, um, after it dries, you're going to start to see your pencil kind of pull through it. You're going to be able to tell where everything goes. And again, you're going to be able to tell because you drew it. You know, you know where everything is. You put it there. All right. So as I'm working on giant Galactus's head and you guys finish up your drawing, is there any questions with the basic pa painting principles? Okay. The last thing I'll say is this. We've got the big jugs in the back. That's where your paint is. I'm going to pull them out so you guys can easily get to them as well as set out these little cups here for you so that you're good to go. My last note is this. Please, under zero circumstances, should you do black. Stick to your colors, and that's it. Let the paper be your white space, as much as I despise having white space. Let it be white if you need some white space. Do not use black. Don't. The reason is this. We are going to wait until it is completely 100% colored, and then we will return and do all of your black space very, very last. I know it sounds dumb, and as you're painting, you're going to be like, I'm losing all my detail. It looks funky and stupid, but I promise you, I promise. The second you add in that black space again, it's going to become rich and vibrant, and you're going to love it. I promise. But please, under zero circumstances, should you jump directly into black. Okay? Anything that you drew is black. Because that's the comic that we drew from started out as a black and white comic. Right? So anything that you drew is going to be black eventually. But again, do your color first. We'll come back to all the black space later. And I promise, when you add that over top, it's going to make it look crazy balling. Cool? Awesome? All right. No questions? Coolio. Um, then, that's it.